and welcome. Where's my lovely assistant though? Lovely assistant, where are you? I'm here. Yay! This is my lovely assistant, Texafort. For all of you new people here, I'm Lisa Mitrokin. My lovely assistant is Tech Support. We will be entertaining you tonight with all sorts of amazing things. We have plenty of surprises for you. I hear that a bunch of people are already in the stream. So thank you so much for being here. Albert Jones himself should be with us here tonight because it is in fact the Black Widow stream. He's here. Yay! He says, hi, Albert Jones from Black Widow here. Hi, Albert. So, uh, what do we have today? Uh, today is a challenge. One of you, MC, uh, challenged me to do a skin tone coloring using only Black Widow skin tones, which doesn't sound that complicated, but it is for me because usually, if you guys watch my streams, you know that when I color skin tones, I use the entire range of colors and I especially use a lot of blue, a lot of purple, I use red, I even use green. Um, but the skin tone sets are uh, quite um, quite specific to skin tones. So I've never ever limited myself to to a single palette before. And today will, will truly be a challenge. MC also told me that she looked on YouTube and she didn't find a single tutorial that features only the skin tone sets for skin tones. So I thought that we need to fix that. And this will be the Black Widow tutorial for um, the skin tone sets. The page that we're working with is something that I started with my patrons a couple of months ago. We used this for um, the dog fur tutorial, which of course had already been released in its edited form. Many of you saw it. And there are two versions of this. With the patrons, I did the, the same coloring on gray paper and also on tan toned paper. We did that to compare how the dog fur will come out on different papers. Uh, I did do a lot more work on the gray toned paper dog. We didn't get as far with this one, but it doesn't matter because today we'll be working on the human character. And because we're working with skin tones, given the choice, if you have gray and tan and you're going for soft daylight lighting, I would always go with tan. It's just more flattering to the skin. It's already your base tone. Um, so if you have the choice, go with tan. Of course, all of this is possible on white, but you know me, I like my toned paper. Gray paper would also work for skin tones. You know, I did the Harley Quinn page on, on gray toned and it didn't change the colors of the pencils at all. Um, but I tend to do gray more for comic kind of illustrations and also for different kind of a mood lighting. Like if this was a darker room or a night scene with moonlight, gray would be perfect but the light is already established on the dog so we can't really play with the light too much we have to go with what we already have so um, because the light on the dog is already established um, that's the kind of a light source that we'll be working with um, for the girl as well so here the light is coming from this direction i imagine we can tell that from how light the nose of the dog is over here and also the eyebrow and there's more shadow on this side of the face so if you already have a character that's that's colored that you started working on, it's important to keep your light source consistent. So in this case, the light is coming from this direction. So we'll have this side of the face um, lit better and this side of the face will have more shadow. So the way that I work when, when I work with skin tones and especially when I'm limited to a palette is I assess my tools. Um, these are the two sets. I, I have a lot of them. You guys probably saw the video where I received the amazing gift from Albert. Uh, this is the light skin tones and this is the dark skin tones. Do not make the mistake of thinking that the light skin tones are all that you need to create a, a light skin toned person portrait and the dark skin tones are all that you need for darker skin. It doesn't work that way because lighting is very dynamic and as you can see, like if you if you look at my face right now, some of the shadows over here are very dark brown. You will need those dark brown pencils, even though my actual skin color is very light. Same thing with with really dark skin. The part that this part, oh my god, <laughs> this part over here that's really well lit. If my skin was really dark, this part would still be very light, and I would still need to use even white to establish that light glow in the face. So I advocate using both sets for any type of skin tone that you're using. It's just a matter of balance and a matter of lighting. So the way that I like to approach this is I know that 
I know the kind of lighting that I'm dealing with, so I will pre-select my basic colors. I will need white, but instead of using a white pencil, I will use my white charcoal. However, these white pencils are perfectly fine. If that's all you have, you don't need white charcoal. I'm just addicted to this stuff. If you are working with skin tone sets, if you have these sets, um, I will be calling out the, the colors exactly. If you do not, if you're working with a different brand or a mix of brands, which is perfectly fine, what you need to do is select two lighter kind of cream beige pink colors. Then I have my mid-tones, which are brown, um, brown and mustard. And then I have the darker browns and black and yellow and orange. So I will start with my white, but before I go crazy coloring, who's with us? Let's say hello to people. We have a lot of people here. I'm just gonna scroll back up to the top okay. of the chat and I'm just gonna start shouting out names. We got yeah. Diane, Madam Lori, Sharon Cynthia Johnson. Hello, hello. Evelyn is here. Hello, of course, because Riggs is here. He can't operate the computer on his own. He's a dog, of course he can. Oh, you're Dogs right. know more than we give them credit. Uh, we have Pat, Isolina, Janine is here. Wonderful. Of course, Hello. Albert, thank you for joining. MC, Rain Chains for Less, Christine. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Cassandra. Hello, another Didn't Australian. Didn't I have like, an announcer voice that I did that You did, time? you did. Naomi. Hello. Tanya. Hello. Mona. Hello. Nightbot. <gasps> Nightbot, <laughs> welcome. Fern is here. Andrea is here. Bev, Emily, and if I didn't say your name, no, I think we're good. Before I jump into coloring, you said that Iselina is here. Iselina is here. We have a surprise for Iselina. We do? We do. All right, so as we just discussed, the light is coming from this direction, which is actually true in this setup, as you can see from the shadow cast by my hand, the light is actually coming from this direction, but that will also be true on my paper. If you're working on, on any kind of a toned paper, I advise you to um, start by suggesting your, your lightest areas. Like as soon as you establish the light source, you have half of the work already done for you. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, so the, you establish a light source. You're you, done. You're done, honestly, because the the paper is is toned, so you already have your mid tone, and the light is is already creating the contrast that you need for this object to look, or this subject to look three dimensional. Uh, so it's it's quite magical, and even though we may not keep this as white, we may color over this area with some skin tones. Uh, I still like to establish the, the pure white highlights and I use my, my Q-tip so that um, I, I blend it really nicely into the paper and also create this little smoky effect on the skin that's, that's very desirable. Uh, but as I create them with, with pure white, which is, which is why I really like the, the white charcoal over the pencils. I do use pencils sometimes, white pencils, um, but I like, the, I like the feel of these sticks better and I like um, the distribution of the pigment because it is a little bit powdery and because it's slightly more powdery than, than a pencil that any brand pencil can, can possibly allow themselves to be, um, that allows me to do this smudgy thing um, with my Q-tip. And if you add too much of this white, don't worry about it because the pencils go over it just as beautifully as they do um, over paper itself. So you can always take it out. And if it really bothers you, like if you added it to a part that shouldn't have the white light, you can use an eraser and, and take it off. A kneaded eraser would be, would be better than a regular eraser because it just picks up the pigment. It doesn't smear it. Again, the only reason that I'm choosing this direction is because it's already that way with the dog. So we want to be consistent in the composition. You can, you can have multiple light sources, but multiple light sources will be visible on all of your subjects in the composition. You can't have uh, different mismatched light sources on different characters. Even though I'm establishing um, only the light source right now, I'm keeping the shadows in mind. For instance, knowing that the light is coming from this direction, 
I'm assuming that there will be a shadow right here cast by the nose. So I'm not adding anything light on this side of the nose or on this side of the face at all. Uh, but the cheek is a little bit rounded, just like this one. Uh, hopefully they're matched on her face. Uh, so this part of the cheek will have a little bit of a light spill again from this direction. And I'm adding it to the eyelids, even though I don't know what I will do with the eyelids. Probably she will have some kind of makeup on or there will be a shadow cast by her eyebrow. I don't yet know, um, but I'm adding a little bit of a light um, reflection here just to suggest the three-dimensional shape of the eyelids. And of course, the nose will be very well lit over here, a little bit over here, and the bottom lip. The top lip won't be lit at all uh, because it's a little bit facing down, uh, but the bottom lip will be. And again, it probably won't have any white in it at all by the time we're done, um, but we need to put that, um, that little light reflection there. And that's it. That was really fast, right? It, it was a minute or two, I don't know. It was, it was lightning fast, that's all you need. You establish your light source, you already know where the shadows will go. The rest is just filling it in. So for the colors that I've selected, I will actually go to my um, middle brown that I've chosen instead of starting with the light cream colors, which is, which is an option. I like to start with, with the brown tones, even for light skin. So I will sharpen it. Albert taught me a trick that it's, it's good to turn your sharpener and not your pencil and that way you don't break your tips. I've been using that trick and it's been working beautifully. Um, so with my brown, uh, the one that I chose is Negra and the other one that I have laying around here is Cinnamon. So I'll be working with both of those. But right now I'm using Negra. Again, if you don't have this set, if this is from the dark skin tone set, uh, if you don't have this set, if you don't have Black Widows at all, if you're working with something else, all of these effects can be achieved with other brands. This isn't a promotional video. Like I'm not actually sponsored by Black Widow pencils. I just really, really love them. Since we already established our light with the white charcoal, my next step is always to choose my middle brown, my, um, my strong but not the darkest brown. And with that, I establish my main shadows. So the strongest shadow here will be this part over here, um, under the eyelid and around the bridge of the nose. I've been practicing uh, lately holding my pencil really far back uh, for two reasons. First, I discovered uh, during one of my private lessons with one of my patrons that if I hold my pencil really far back, she can actually see what I'm coloring instead of watching this the entire time. <laughs> So some added benefits for artists and streamers, uh, holding your pencil back uh, certainly allows your audience to see more of what you have to present. But for colorists, even when you're uh, set up at home on your couch and on your, um, on your nightstand, on your drawing table, wherever it is that, that you may like to color, uh, even in the comfort of your own home where you're, you're free to lean over your page or turn your page any which way you can, I highly, highly advise that you actually keep a certain distance from your page and hold your pencil a little bit further back because first of all, the, the distance will allow you to assess the composition as a whole. You will see, um, like from this distance, I can tell, I can clearly tell where the shadows should go and you can certainly always use reference photography as well to help guide you. Um, but having that distance, not having my nose all the way up in the page uh, allows me to clearly envision where the shadows should go and uh, holding the pencil for the back allows me to not apply so much pressure as I would um, if I was holding the pencil close. Because if, if you're holding it really close, it's really easy to apply a lot of pressure. And especially if you're trying to hurry or if you're trying to make something darker, um, the, the natural tendency is just to press your pencil harder into the page and ta-da, it's darker. But it's actually, it's not a very good strategy because um, first of all, it damages the page. You don't actually want to uh, apply so much pressure that you're changing the tooth of the page. I know that some artists prefer to do that, but I, I am strongly against it. And it works for some, um, but, and you're certainly welcome to try every method that there is out there. Um, but for me, I like to keep the tooth exactly the way that it was. None of my drawings, no matter how dark they are, um, have any variation in the tooth of the paper. It's consistent throughout. And, and the way that I achieve that is by applying lots and lots of layers very gently, one on top of the other, until, um, until I get to, to the effect that, that I actually find 
uh, pleasing and attractive. There was a question. Oh, please. Many, many ages ago in a completely different stream, Madame Laurie asked, what's the best way to position the light? Oh. Um, she wants to specifically a desk lamp for good light. Uh, very good question. Um, actually, the best way, if you're right-handed, um, the best position for the light is to be above your page and slightly to the left or in front of your drawing board. And you don't want the light to be so bright that it's actually shining onto your page and making glare. Um, you want more diffuse lighting. Um, you definitely don't want a light from the opposite direction that's casting a strong shadow on what you're coloring, um, which is actually kind of what I have going on here. My strongest light is over here, which is casting a little bit of a shadow, um, but it is being balanced by all the other studio lights in here that are lighting this from all directions. Uh, so here it's actually it's actually okay-esque. Uh, but uh, also uh, neck lights and headlamps are very helpful. Uh, but be careful with those because um, they do shift as you shift your weight, um, as, you're, as you're drawing, as you're moving on the couch or at your desk. The neck light or the headlamp will also shift with you. And they, they also tend to be spotty, like they don't light the whole page. So I use them when I color um, in the dark because Apparently, I do quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but if you have daylight, ideally daylight is the best lighting. If you can find a place to draw by an open window, even on a gloomy day, daylight is, is a more pure form of light that is more desirable for, for art. And ideally, you want to be either in front of the window or have the window slightly opposite of the hand that is your main drawing hand. Most excellent question. Um, also, I tend to, I completely ignored um, the rest of her skin. The correct thing to, to do would have been to also add my light source here to the neck and the shoulder area. But I got so um, carried away with the face. And it's fine to do things um, in, in parts. Like I am more interested in the face for the lesson part. Um, so I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time on, on the rest of her skin. But when you're doing this by yourself, I recommend that you do everything very systematically. So if you're doing skin tones, um, deal with the entire surface that's, uh, that's skin toned color by color. So when you're adding white, add your white highlights to all the parts that are, that are skin. And then when you switch to your negra, you know, apply the negra to all the parts that are skin so that you don't forget because it's easy to lose track. You know, if you if you spend several days on this, by the end of day three, you won't remember what your order of operations was unless you actually take notes on this. And then it's going to be very difficult to, to match the colors at the end. Um, me, I'm more interested in the face, but I also don't want it to look like it's just floating in space. I'm going to just trail this off and I'm going to add uh, this shadow under the chin, which also is a very, very strong reminder of where the light source is and a very good trick for defining a three-dimensional shape. Uh, so the shadow under the chin on the, on the neck is always a little bit darker, um, kind of like the shadow over here, but even a little bit darker, um, considering that the light is coming from this direction. So that's always good to establish. Yes. If you would like to order OpenStock, I'm gonna hijack the camera. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if you would like to order OpenStock from Black Widow Pencils, the email address for Albert is in the video description. It was already there because because someone is a good YouTuber. Good YouTuber. Yes, we're gonna switch back to her now. Oh. <laughs> it's is... like, did you ever see that movie Split, where one of them gets to to take the light? Oh I'm what was his name? Hedwig. I'm Hedwig. Hedwig was eight. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and it even it even says Split on the buttons. Oh, wonderful! So, so, so when I want to take the light, I just take it from her. I just take it. I just take it. <laughs> Oh my god, you did take the light. Oh, oh, she's back. Okay, I gotta go. Oh. Oh, no, I'm Canadian. Oh, geez. She's back. I gotta give up the light, eh? <laughs> so we, we do have a lot of Canadians in the audience. They're probably rolling their eyes right now. And so like, we don't I have to. love people from Canada. Actually, all the people from Canada that I know, and I know a lot of people from Canada, all of them make fun of Canadians the same way that the rest of us. <laughs> like in the nicest possible way. They're like, no, we really say sorry all the time. <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we established enough with this brown. Again, working very, very lightly. I also like to use my Q-tip 
on the on the colors as well with the q-tip it's the same thing i'm barely applying any pressure at all um it's just to smooth it out a little bit for all of you what andrew says i'm canadian sorry <laughs> Um, for all of you who are uh, concerned about the the tooth of the paper, who don't like to see the tooth of the paper through the through the pencils, instead of um, smashing your pigment into the surface, I I would advocate using the the Q-tip because it does smooth that texture out. Uh, but like I said, I actually like the the texture. Okay, let's do some pink. For pinks, I have rust. And I have saffron. Rust is a little bit lighter. Saffron is a little bit darker. These are these are what they look like. So again, if you're trying to match these colors from a different set, you're going for a, a peachy peachy pink or a, a pink pink. And the way that I work, I chose two of these. I don't know if I'll use both of them. Um, this is one of the reasons that I don't give you guys color lists um, is because a lot of this is very intuitive for me, and a lot of this I test directly on the paper. So I will I will start with this rust and see how it feels over here. Seems good. I like it. It's very gentle, kind of blushy, um, kind of a pink. I really like it. Uh, it seems to work on this paper. Sometimes you'll pick a color and it just doesn't. Uh, doesn't really make a difference on toned paper because it's pretty much the same tone as the paper itself. So if that happens, I'll just switch to uh, a similar color, but a little bit darker. But in this case, uh, what is this, rust? The rust is actually working quite beautifully. And I tend to switch back and forth between a lighter color and a darker color. And that's how I balance my, my shadows. So I established the brown and now I'm adding the rust over the brown and spilling onto the white. So that creates this nice fumato kind of a shadow, which is very smoky, very blurry, very cinematic. This is the kind of look that you want to go for um, when you're creating soft lighting. So you don't need to work with the tiny circles. If you do, more power to you. <laughs> you know, go for it or work with whatever works best for you. I don't do the tiny circles because I think they're way too time consuming. And you're also not really feeling the shape of the face. For instance, here the cheek is rounded and I'm actually working in, in more rounded strokes. Here I have a curve under the cheek that's going here and I'm also following that line and I'm doing this fast enough that, I, that this is materializing right in front of my face and I know what adjustments need to be made. When you're spending too much time on fine detail and when your face is too close to the page, you lose track of the bigger picture and it's very easy um, to have things not fall together at the end. You really need to view it as a single object and build it up layer by layer, shadow by shadow, um, always remembering your light source. All right. Whew. Well, this is, this is going well. I like the rust. The blending is coming along beautifully. One of the things that I love about Black Widows is how nicely they blend with each other. And they also seem to work really well with Prismacolors. You can see during most of my streams and tutorials, I tend to use a blend of both Black Widows and Prismacolors. And I just have them laying around all together in, in one big mess of a box that some of you really hate. <laughs> you really want to see me more organized. They don't, uh, like, they don't like your, your pencil organizer down they, there on the floor? They don't like my pencil organizer down there on the floor, no. Right, they, it's wonderful. Again, um, notice the direction of, of my pencil strokes. Oh, wow. As the light is coming from here, so my hand moves in that same direction. Um, working faster, I highly recommend trying it out. Try being more sloppy. We're so concentrated on details that we lose track of the bigger picture. You will start sloppy and then tune it down. Don't start with a fine detail and expect it all to fall together in the end. It's best to understand uh, the three-dimensional aspects of your subject and to build it up that way. I would rather see in your coloring uh, broader brush strokes, uh, not such excellent shading, but to see the shadows exactly where they belong because that comes across as more natural, that comes across as more pleasant. Like oftentimes you see something that just no matter how you look at it, you see that it's a sloppy drawing or a sloppy painting, but it just, it's very pleasant to look at and you don't understand like why, why am I so attracted to this work of art? Um, but then again, you see some coloring or some painting or some drawing out there that's just like so seemingly flawless when you look at it up close, but it just doesn't 
come across as um, as realistic. The shadows are off. The the proportions might be off if it's a drawing or a painting, and and that is why your structure is more important than all the details. So the the rest worked beautifully. I'm switching back to my negra because I think this shadow over here needs to be a little bit darker. And uh, that is the kind of balance that I'm always introducing to my work. I'm not just uh, I'm not just going through my colors in any particular order, and you know I moved off this color and that's it. Now on to the next. I am I have them all laying next to me, and I'm just working with these what are they seven eight tools that I've selected and going back and forth. If if I missed a spot, I just cover it later. If I feel like something um, isn't built up strongly enough, then I build it up later. And also consider the fact that as we are adding more colors and as we're adding more contrast, our perception of the previous color is also changing. So something may seem like a bright color when it's by itself on the page, but if you add a brighter, deeper color next to it, all of a sudden it dims. And that is another reason why you can't just uh, you can't just start coloring from one side of the page to the other. You really need to be building it up layer upon layer upon layer and constantly balancing it. And, and you'll get a hand of it as, as you practice. You know, we, uh, students always complain about uh, our teachers saying the solution to everything is practice. And like, well, I, I want to know the rules. And, and the truth is practice is the number one thing that will improve your skills, that will improve your technique. There's no arguing with that. It's obviously you need to practice something that's correct, um, but you also need to experiment. And the only way that we learn our muscle memory is so much stronger than our um, actual memory, than, than understanding something. Like you are understanding everything that I'm telling you, but most of this, you won't actually think of it when you're coloring. But if you practice something, if you try an effect um, actually physically with your hand on your paper and you try it and you have that experience, uh, the muscle memory of doing something a certain way will kick in the next time that, that you're practicing the same effect. So that's a much more powerful tool. Like a lot of people are saying, uh, I'm afraid of coloring this page because I will ruin it. Don't, don't do that. Um, most of these are PDFs. You can print as many copies of them as you want. Print 20, print 100, color one every day. Some of you print many copies and, and try out different different techniques. And I highly encourage that because it's not about um, you know preserving this one page that's irreplaceable, and sometimes that's true if you have a collectible book that that you don't want to color in. But these are PDFs; you can you can print as many as you want. So so take advantage of that most definitely. And actually, since we're already speaking about uh, you know bravery and and trying out new things, um, and possibly being intimidated by some work and, and all that jazz, I have another surprise for you. Surprise. I am bringing back survival coloring. Um, if you have no idea what that is, if you're new here, um, when uh, the pandemic started, we started a daily stream called Survival Coloring, during which we colored and we talked about- Yeah, we survived. How to survive. <laughs> yes, and it was, uh, it was a wonderful stress relief for everyone. And this, this past week, um, well, the past month or two really, but especially last week, it, it really hit me how, um, how unhappy everyone is on the internet. And it started to wear off on, on me as well. Like my mood changed dramatically. I had a pretty difficult week because I would spend 10 minutes on Facebook and I just felt like crying from all the posts. <laughs> and and it, instead of, you know, I paused and I thought, you know, what's going on? Why am I suddenly so sensitive to all these posts? Uh, and it's because, and I talked to some of my friends on, on online as well about this phenomenon and, and I got the same feedback from other, other group leaders and other group moderators that people do indeed seem to be uh, noticeably more depressed and more timid these days because the stress of the situation is just getting to everyone. You know, people, people are tired. People 
are scared. Um, some people are sick and some people are just plain stressed out and exhausted. And that's perfectly fine. So I wanted to bring back this segment to remind you guys that it's okay to be tired and it's okay to be cranky and it's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to hide. The worst thing that you can do right now is to go into your own little world and hide by yourself and, and try to avoid people. The best thing that you can do is be social right now. So many people are avoiding social media. So many Facebook members are dropping off or just lurking in the shadows uh, saying, I don't want to depress others. You can't depress us. We're all already <laughs> depressed. Let's just laugh about it instead. Like whatever you're going through, we're in this unique situation where the whole world is going through the same thing. You're not a burden on us. You can't, you can't pull yourself out of quicksand by your own hair. It's very difficult. It is possible, but it is very difficult. A better way to do this is to do it with friends. Like if someone cheers you up, if someone shows you a funny movie or tells you a joke, it's such a powerful tool. It just Sometimes you need a good laugh and, and a good giggle, and sometimes you just need to talk about really stupid stuff and watch really stupid movies. And you can't do all that if you're hiding in your cave, uh, thinking that you just need to wait this out, because the more you wait and the more you hide, the more difficult things are going to get and the darker things are going to get. So I'm here to remind you that you shouldn't be hiding. Come out and play with us. So many of you, too many of you are making posts like, I'm afraid of sharing my work. And I see that a lot of you stopped sharing your work in progress shots. Such a shame, such a shame. Please just whatever you have going on, whatever you doodled, no one's gonna laugh at you. Like, tech support makes art. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and no one laughs at him. Some of you even have his, some of you even have his art on your wall. That's true, that's true. So the other thing, I'm actually going to put you on the spot because I want to ask you, <laughs> What you want from me? What you want, woman? I want. To... <laughs> I don't even have to say it. <laughs> he just says it for me. <laughs> I want you to tell the nice people on the internet what would you recommend to people who find it difficult to find motivation? Like people are not coloring because they're not motivated. They're not socializing because they're not motivated. They're not watching streams because they're not motivated. How do you find motivation? move that's really all there is to it if you find yourself stuck the best possible thing that you can do is just move your body physically move. physically move your body get up and just walk around move yourself from the place that you're in to a different place in your house and if there is something that you would like to do just start doing it it's easy to be overwhelmed by, by the thought of not being able to finish something. Oh, there's so much, I don't have the time, Blah, whatever. You don't have to finish it. You, all you have to do is start. And you can commit to the smallest possible piece of it. I will color for five minutes. And that's it, I will color mm -hmm. for one minute. And you'll find that after a minute, it's a lot easier to color for a second minute. Or after five minutes, it's a lot easier to color for another five minutes. Just start. So those are the two things. It is scientifically proven by scientists and scientific <laughs> people. And you can read about it on the internet. Scientificalists. Because, because the internet tells the truth about some things sometimes, um, <laughs> scientifically. Anyway, it is, uh, it is true that physically moving your body is key to getting yourself out of a mental rut. So just do that. Just get up and move, walk around, move to a different place. Most, Yay. most excellent advice. Oh, I thought I was off the screen. I'm not off the screen. <laughs> oh, you're picking your nose. <laughs> Most, most excellent advice. And and the other the other thing that I want to talk about specifically about coloring, um, that I noticed a shift in um, in colorist energy lately is that a lot of you are also posting things like I'm really stressed about not getting this effect right, and that's uh, that's understandable. But please remember that coloring is supposed to be stress relief. If you if you're stressing over coloring, you're doing it wrong. Just color for the sake of coloring. Like I show you um, professional results. I show you professional uh, techniques because I'm a professional artist. You don't have to be. I want to share with you everything that I know so that you can apply even a fraction of this 
um, to your own coloring and see if it makes it more fun. But it doesn't actually have to look any particular way. Like your coloring doesn't have to look like mine. In fact, it's better if it doesn't. Find your own style, find your own voice. You may not even like uh, colored pencils. You may prefer to color with markers. You may prefer to color with watercolors. Remember that the, the process of coloring is the hobby, not the result. None of us, even I, we're not submitting any of these works to galleries and art shows. We're coloring them and then we're putting them away in folders. I sent myself to MoMA. <laughs> I will switch to saffron for the lips. This is a brighter pink. So the skin tone sets, they do not come with any kind of a red. They have pinks and they have browns. Um, but they do have, ah, they do have brighter pinks. So let's try this one for the lips. Normally I would add a touch of red to the lips, but I will instead use this pink. This is where the challenge part of this exercise comes in um, because as some colors are just not present in the sets, but they are present in other Black Widow sets. So you, you certainly um, don't need to worry yourself about that. Uh, and uh, you also don't need to use only the skin tone set uh, to create a skin tone. Uh, you know, I always tell you that you should use every tool in the box. So I will actually make these lips only natural color, no lipstick, um, because the challenge, skin tones only. And that's fine. On our natural skin tone lip tone, skin tone lip tone, we have only browns and pinks and peaches, and all of those are present in the, in the skin tone sets. So if later I wish to give her some more makeup, I can go over it with some other Black Widow colors. There's some beautiful reds in the other three sets. Uh, so this is, I can never pronounce this. How do you read this? Sherbet. Sherbet. So on something like the lips, you see that I'm going back and forth quite a bit between my light colors and my dark colors because I'm constantly balancing to see if it looks right. And then I actually sit back like, physically sit back to see if it looks good from a distance, if it's readable. And I may keep adjusting it even further as I get further into this coloring, as I add more detail to the eyes, to the nose, etc. People are saying that you should call out colors more because... That I should what? Call out the colors more because it looks like you're switching them really fast. Call out the colors more. Call out the colors. I am on cinnamon right now. There you go. <laughs> Color called out. Color called out. Called out just for you. Cinnamon. So we didn't have cinnamon uh, before on this skin tone. We only used negra. Now I'm adding cinnamon over the brown areas just to give it a little bit more volume. The cinnamon and the negra are very similar, but you see that the negra is a little bit darker. The cinnamon is a little bit more chocolatey. So I already established my shadows with the negra and I'm adding my cinnamon on top. Again, this is not a rule. This isn't oh. something... What? Hey, Lisa. Hey, person in the live chat. Albert. <gasps> Ooh, Try what? pushing down on the painted tip to get the pencil out of the tray rather than <gasps> pushing down on the lead tip to avoid possibly breaking your pencils. <gasps> it totally works. What an amazing piece of packaging. Wow. Oh, totally. Press and out they come. That's the second useful tip that I got from Albert for how to use pencils. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks, Albert. Uh, so the the cinnamon is very similar to, to Negro, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit more cheerful. Uh, it has a little bit more um, brown, uh, like chocolate brown saturation to it. So adding it over, it's a feeling, you know, this is not a formula. It's not like you have to be taking notes of the, on this first a layer of negra, then a layer of rust, then a layer of cinnamon. No, this is something that works for me right now in this moment, in this mood, in this lighting. Um, but go with what feels right for you. You know, don't try to match exact pencils. There are more than enough here to play with. And your skin tone may be a little bit different from mine. Your lighting may be a little bit different from mine. You know, I was locked into this lighting because I already had the dog drawn. But you may choose to have the light coming from this direction, uh, lighting most of the front of her face. 
So your shadows will be in completely different places and completely different color. Like I'm going for a kind of a golden light. So I will also be adding some yellow tones here in a minute. Uh, but you may not want that. You may stick with, with pinks and browns. Uh, so the idea here is pay attention to when I'm switching from brown to pink to to yellow, etc. But not etc. But not et cetera. <laughs> but not specific colors because if you fixate on the names and on the numbers and on the colors, like, the whole thing is not going to fit together. It's not about that. So yes, I will continue calling out the colors, but I want to make sure that you guys are not. Um, just trying to to follow the step by step, thinking that you can apply the same exact procedure to every other coloring. That is not the point. Uh, and it may not even work in a different setting because you have to play it by ear. But I want what I want you to try to um, to grasp here is the decisions that I'm making and why I'm making them and how you can apply the same kind of a decision making process to your coloring. Like why am I adding more and more brown here and why this brown? Well, because I feel like this shadow needs to be a little bit more exaggerated and I'm actually judging it by the dog. The shadow on the dog is quite strong. So I want to make sure that everything is consistent. The lighting is consistent in this painting. I have just one light source, so very simple setup. Uh, but I also wanted um, to be quite obvious that the light isn't just diffused all around the room, that it's coming from one direction. So in order to do that, I'm establishing stronger contrast. And in order to do that, the shadows have to be darker and the light areas have to be lighter. Uh, so balancing all the time. And when it comes to things like eyelashes and eyebrows, I like to um, build them up in layers as well. And I start with my browns and then later I may end up on solid black, but I'm only adding the black when I already have everything done in sepia colors and brown colors because that will make the black not so stark and flat. It will make it look more natural and it will have that body to it that just comes across as more realistic. Okay, so this is looking good. My light and shadow are looking wonderful. I want to add a little bit of golden tones. So I have olive gold and leather. Um, both of these are kind of olive green colors, which seem very counterintuitive for skin tones, but you'll be surprised how many of these tones are actually present in natural lighting on light colored skin. Uh, so this, this olive gold in particular is very scary because it looks quite green, but we'll try it out now. And we'll add it to the mid-tones between the darker part of the shadow and the lighter part as a transition. And I'm adding it very, very lightly, very lightly. And here's another reason why you want to add lots of layers and why you want to add them light, lightly. Because at this point, if you had ground your pigment into the paper, you wouldn't have enough room to keep adding more tones. Like, that's it. If you flatten your page, if you really rub the pigment into the page, um, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, you can do it. It rubs the pigment into the page or it gets the... <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help it. It's the, the silence of the lambs, dude. He's just, he's forever ruined with that line. Poor guy. That poor guy. He really hates that character. He's such a nice guy in real life. Yeah. He's forever traumatized by the character that he had to play. Because it's not just that he's traumatized by that character. Everyone wants to cast him for that same guy because he did such an amazing job. So now he can't get out of the stereotype. So as I was saying... If you had already, um, if you had already rubbed your pigment into the page very strongly, um, then a lot of times, and many of you know, know this because I, I see you posting about it uh, quite often, uh, saying things like, I, I can't keep adding more color here. I can't keep adding more layers here because the paper can't take anymore. You should never get to that point. I can keep adding layers here forever. There is literally no limit. And, and I achieve that by not applying too much pressure. Because I'm just lightly, lightly grazing the surface of the paper, it may take a little bit longer, but you know we have time. This is supposed to be a, a stress relief uh, kind of a hobby. This is supposed to be relaxing and, and therapeutic. You know, you sit here for hours and just keep building up your layers and building up your layers, and that also allows you to have more control. It allows you to 
see when something's not going in the direction that you want and make the appropriate changes on the spot. So you can see how this, this color, it's incredible. This is this and the leather are my two favorite colors in the skin tone sets. I use them all the time. I discovered them when I was doing the Harley Quinn coloring and I've been hooked ever since. It just, it doesn't look green at all on paper. It just has that nice natural sunlight glow that you may get on, on a really warm day. It's kind of wonderful, especially if you use it over a nice brown to use it as a blender. It's just fantastic. Uh, so just for these colors alone, like that totally sold me on the skin tone sets. I did not believe in the skin tone sets in the beginning. I think I told you guys on the, on the Black Widow show this story that in the very beginning, before I even ever tried Black Widows, I, I saw people using these sets. Um, and, and praising the skin tone sets, and I genuinely didn't believe in them. I was like, an artist doesn't need a skin tone set. You come up with the skin tones, you build them up. Like, who can possibly tell me what the skin tone should be? And then when I got my first skin tone set, I was it was these pencils, these olive colors that, that totally um, changed my mind because they're not your typical skin tone sets. What I expected... Uh, was more like a makeup set that goes from a dark brown to to beige to near white. Um, and that's just not enough to create a realistic skin tone illusion. Uh, but these sets are not limited to the beige and the brown tones. Uh, they are very diverse um, in other colors as well. So uh, not too much of this and not all over the place. Oops, totally broke my pencil just now. Sorry about that, Albert. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm multitasking way. So we'll switch over to me now and I'll be like... Hand puppets. Oh, do you want to show them pictures and tell them what's coming on Saturday? Uh, Lisa and Jennifer are doing a coloring swap. Where are you starting? I'm or starting on Saturday, yeah. So We're starting at 10. She will have a live stream, but I will do my best not to break. Uh, <laughs> during which she will be coloring one of Jennifer's pictures. Correct. And then there's a one hour break and then Jennifer picks up and will be coloring one of Lisa's pictures. This is the Animal Nature stream. And you've probably seen the trailer for it on YouTube. The trailer's up, right? Yes, the trailer's up. And it's very popular. Yeah, the trailer's really cute. Mine starts on Saturday at 10 a.m. And then we'll take a lunch break, a nacho break. And, uh, and Jennifer's will be right after mine at 1 p.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the pictures that we'll be coloring are these. I will be doing Jennifer's Noble Fox from her book, Bella Futura. And this you guys already saw, I did a tutorial on how I colored this only in watercolor. It was supposed to be a watercolor base with pencils on top, but I got carried away and I did the whole thing in watercolor. You, so you already have this as a tutorial. What? Uh, will you be doing pencils or watercolor on Saturday? I will be doing both. I will be doing both. Instead of doing it the same exact way, I will actually flip the effects. I will do the fur as a galaxy effect, as one of you suggested. So for that, I will be using watercolor, but I will also do a very close up demo on the gemstone, which I will do in pencils. So both, bring both. Um, and Jennifer will be working in my book, Fantastic Familiars coloring my peacock Kevin. There he is on the cover and that's the page that she'll be working on. Uh, we also have um, bundles on Etsy that are already available. So all the links to that video description and of course you'll find everything out on Saturday as well. So there are many ways to get these pages and color with us. If you don't already have them, we also have events in our group. So just when you see us looking totally goofy with, with the telephone and everything, know that it's all about animal nature and uh, and there's going to be lots of fun, um, lots of goofy goofiness and uh, also giveaways. There will be um, there will be quite a few giveaway giveaways on both of our channels for PDF downloads of animal pages. And we'll share animal stories and we'll show you pictures of our animals and it will just be wonderful and fun. And that's coming up this Saturday. Okay, so now I'm working with a color called Mud. This is a very, very dark brown. And I'm building up the eyelashes and enhancing the eyebrows. 
And I tend not to go over the eyelashes lash by lash. I just kind of suggest the direction of them um, because I don't want it to look like doll's eyelashes, kind of fake. Uh, so I'm just, uh, I'm, they also cast shadows. Her eyelash, her eyelids are closed. So the lashes are very close to the skin. So you have this layer of eyelash and also a layer of shadow right underneath. So you don't want to draw all that out um, line by line because that's just a little too tedious. Um, but kind of uh, brushing off from the base and out with the eyelashes and making it a little bit blurry uh, creates a more realistic effect. Uh, a lot of times the eyelashes kill the illusion of realism because we tend to overwork them and make them too perfect. When in reality, even if they are perfect, that's not how the brain perceives them. When you look at someone, you don't really count every single eyelash on their face. You, you're just kind of aware of the fact that they have eyelashes. And since this, this mud is really nice um, for enhancing my shadow, I'm adding it again, yet another layer. The shadows can be a little bit stronger here. Um, so I'm adding it very, very lightly. And as you add more and more layers, every new layer, you apply even less pressure and even, even less strokes. Like I'm barely touching it. I'm barely adding any pigment, but the effect just materializes naturally. It's kind of magical. And these pencils are very friendly for that effect. They're just beautiful for blending. And if you did something, if you made it too dark, um, don't, don't erase it. You'll, you'll make a mess. And it's just, it's not a very good habit. Uh, instead, either balancing, balance it by making the other areas that are meant to be dark, just as dark, just take everything to a darker level or, um, take away some of that dark pigment by adding a lighter color over it, which is, which is also an option. You can keep using your blenders, the, the peach color that we used, what was it? Rust. Um, you can reintroduce that and smooth out some of these gradients if you feel like they're getting just a little bit too dark. Um, but I like it. I think this, this part of the face that's right up against the dog should be quite dark. That's the dark side of the face because the light is coming from here. It's not a shadow cast by the dog. It just happens to be in this area. The shadow is here because it's the opposite side of where the light is coming from. Oh, I have a surprise for you. You have a surprise for me? I have a surprise for you. I made I don't a know button. If I, can handle any more I, I made a button. I made a button. You should press it because this is a Black Widow stream. And when we did the other Black Widow stream, where I actually colored Black Widow with Black Widows, I had this idea that because it's a widow and the widow's symbol is a spider, and tech support always has spiders above him, it's like his superpower. Anyway, I wanted to do something for that stream, but I forgot. And, um, Instead, I made you a surprise. Now press that button right there. This one right here? Yeah, right there. <gasps> oh! Surprise! Oh! Yeah, I'll press it again. I'll press oh, it again. that's awful. Here they ah. are again. Ah! Do you like that? No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> wait, what wait. Is, what's wrong with you? There's spiders. Get it? Black Widow spiders? And they're always spiders above you? So for the Widow said, oh. I wanted to make like little bungee spiders above him. So instead I made these, here they come again. Yeah, they're on my face. <laughs> Get them off my face. Oh gosh. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Here you go. Oh, yes. Aww, Is that better? There's a butterfly. Is that better? That's Are nice. you okay now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. That's a very sweet butterfly. Okay. No more spiders. I can get behind that. No more spiders. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't really black widow spiders but it was short notice they were great on the screen when i was looking at the the monitor like it really looked like they were crawling on my face i was imagining big giant spiders it was disgusting so this is why i don't do teching because if you if you let me program my buttons that's what happens spiders <laughs> okay so with this with this rust i'm coloring now over the white charcoal that i've established because i don't want pure white on her face um, because that's just uh, that's just glare like in photography that would be overexposure or glare on the skin and we don't really want that um, but because i made this area pure white now the pigment that i'm applying over it is the purest form of this pigment so this rust is truly the the rust color that it is and super gently 
barely, barely touching the page just to create this nice little smooth gradient so that your mind kind of perceives it as white, but it's not really white. It's actually a little bit peachy. And I'm going to do it all over. Also, the dog has pure white highlights. The dog has pure white highlights because the dog actually has white fur and the dog is in the foreground. Um, the girl is behind the dog. She's a little bit further back. So even though the lighting is consistent on both of them, the dog being closer to us will have more definition and will have more light reflected on it. Where, whereas the girl will have a little bit, not that she will be in more shadow, but she will be more diffused. She will have less definition, slightly less. The distance isn't so great for her to actually have perspective blur or, or um, atmospheric blur. Um, but making her, making her highlights just a little bit more toned down in comparison to the dog will give this whole composition a more three-dimensional feel. So it's not just like we have a paper cut out of a girl and a paper cut out of a dog, or they're both on the same plane. We really want it to look like she's behind the dog and the dog is closer. And we do that by building up layers. Everybody loves the spiders. <laughs> they love the spiders? Oh, I saw you press a button. I was scared. I saw, you I saw You pressed the butterfly face. button again. I did. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> Yes, Albert loved the spiders. Everybody's <laughs> loving the spiders. Uh, I was afraid that it would scare people. No. Or that I would get thumbs down for the, for the spiders. Like, oh, I hate spiders. Thumbs down. There. Oh. <laughs> like and subscribe and click the thumbs up button. <laughs> this is a stream of happy bubbles just for you. I like the happy bubbles song. Happy Bubbles, so much better than the spiders. <laughs> and people in the chat were saying that the spiders were threats from you to me. No, no, not at all, no. <laughs> because female spiders kill their mates sometimes. When, the Black Widows do. Oops. Alleged, this, this allegedly. True. Allegedly. They, they've never been convicted. <laughs> <laughs> and there are colors here that I didn't actually end up using. I also brought, uh, in the beginning, I selected this washed purple, which is a- In the beginning a, was a color. In the beginning, there was a, there was a black the color widow. Was in the box. <laughs> it was in the box and it was of the box and then it left the box. And I think, I think I will actually use this color now because I really like it. This is washed purple and I will add it to my shadows only on the, on the darker side of the face, a little bit, and more to the eyelids, suggesting a little bit of eyeshadow with this purple. And it's not, it's not a strong purple. I wouldn't actually use it as a purple if I was doing like purple flowers or something. This is a very subtle uh, shadow purple. It's kind of perfect because the human eye perceives shadows as slightly purple. <laughs> there was a question about focus, oh. like depth of field. Did you say anything about focus or softness? I did. I said that because the girl I don't is, listen to you. I know. I know. <laughs> I don't listen to you in reality. Why should I listen to you during the stream? <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. Ah, no. <laughs> if it was like uh, depth of field, like soft depth yes, of field. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly like that. So this purple is quite beautiful. It gave it gave my, my brown just a little bit extra body and a little bit extra human touch. It's very soft um, in the shadows. And by itself, like building up all these layers, they change each color. Like this brown that I have going on here, you can't just find one pencil that will achieve this effect. This effect is specific to this particular coloring. Like you, you can't match it exactly. Not, a, not unless you watch the show over and over again a million times. And even then it's going to be a little bit different because of your own lighting situation and your pressure and your paper. Um, it's all very, very, very specific. Um, but try to create your own effects. Try to build up your colors and, and listen to the page. Listen to what it's telling you. It, we all know when we don't like something, but when we do like something, we tend to ignore it. Like, we are so critical of our work. Um, so many comments about people's colorings, about your own colorings are, this didn't come out well enough, but why? You have to pinpoint it. A new challenge has been proposed. <gasps> I'm always up for a new challenge. What's up? Do a pick in just tons of grays and blacks. 
All right. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was Evelyn's suggestion. Yeah, totally, totally. I love working in, in just grayscale. A lot of my own stuff that I do is either monochromatic or nearly monochromatic. So I'll, I'll be happy to do a stream with you guys on that. Yeah, totally. And we can even do it side by side, color versus, versus black and white to really demonstrate the light and shadow and how the colors transform. All right, so I'm just going to switch to my darkest color, which is, surprise, surprise, black. Midnight Black from the dark skin tones. Lisa's not breaking the pencil. You weren't supposed to tell them. I said she's not breaking the pencil <laughs> at all. I swear, I promise. <laughs> la, 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 la. My family used to have uh, recordings of musicals. So I grew up watching things like this. I'm throwing all this out there so I can see if the chat blows up with people who remember these things. Uh, Scheherazade. Yes. Um, the musical um, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Mm. Yes. I know it. You know Seven Brides for Seven Brothers? Yeah. Brigadoon? Oh, we watched that one together. Yeah, Brigadoon's a classic. Um, this pencil sharpener is broken. I have to get a new one. The blade is crooked. Because the screw is loose. Not mine. <laughs> the pencil sharpener. <laughs> Singing in the rain. West Side Story. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Sharks, I know. I know all the of these. I'm surprised you know Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Huh. I, I, I part of my responsibility as uh, as uh, a person from America. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I learned English watching I Love Lucy, so I, I know a lot of movies from that era. Okay. So I take it upon myself to introduce Lisa to pop culture films from the 80s. Yes. Uh, it, so. Sometimes it's traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's watch Robocop. <laughs> oh, oh, Flash Gordon. Flash! Ah. <laughs> okay, so finally. With the sound of music. Oh, oh Sandy just had a real spider run across her TV. She was totally confused. Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> okay, can I do the spider thing one more time? Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this up because we're super, super late anyway. And our beautiful coloring is indeed done. So what did we learn today about skin tone coloring? So the main tips are... Uh, Pre-select your colors, even though you have both skin tone sets available, if you have both skin tone sets available, or whatever set you may have, you probably have more than eight pencils in it. I would recommend picking a number between five and ten for your total number of pencils that you're going to work with on this one character. Don't just have the entire box sitting next to you and, and picking any color that may seem nice for in the moment, because things will get very quickly out of hand. What you need is at least two light tones, two mid tones, and two dark tones. That's really all you need for any kind of coloring of a single subject with a single color. All I need is my three light shades, three middle tones, and three dark tones. And I may not even use all of them. I may only use one of each. But I like to pick at least two, maybe three, depending on the kind of set you're working with and the kind of options that you have there for you. Uh, so for me, I chose two light pinks, two middle browns, a dark brown and a black, and also my golden tones. So that's just for for building up character and for building up specific lighting. It's it's extra and it's it's mood establishing. So here we have very warm light, probably sunlight. I also wanted the whole composition to really work well together because of the colors of the dog. So I went with that kind of a color scheme. Um, but really, you can you can go either way. So also, the, the final touch that I did was adding a little bit of purple to the shadows. That's always a good idea. If you have a stronger purple for a more dramatic effect, that's fine. Um, the Black Widow um, skin tone sets come with a very soft, very pleasant um, purple that worked absolutely beautiful for these shadows. I didn't need anything darker than that. But if you do need it to be stronger, you can always water it down with uh, some cinnamon. 
type of a color and that will bring out uh, the purpleness of it. So um, once you've selected your colors, stick with them, put everything else aside so that you don't get tempted and work in layers, 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 layers. You cannot achieve this nice, soft, diffused look, uh, this cinematic look with a, with a beautiful light um, by coloring from, from one edge to the other edge. It just doesn't all add up together in the end. You have to build your layers. And finally, lighting, lighting, lighting. Lighting is way more important than color. So you can do all this with just a brown, a pink, and a yellow, and a white, of course. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter the specific brands and the specific names. As long as you have consistent light source, a believable light source, consistent for the whole composition, and consistent shadows to go with that light source, the rest of it, just the mind connects it all. So there are a million ways to color this page. Every single one of you will color it completely differently and it will all be fine. Like this isn't the one and only way to do it. So don't sweat the details. Um, spend as much time on this as possible as, as is necessary. If it takes a week, a week, a month, a month, whatever. Um, do quick ones, do, do, do longer ones, just play with it. Print many copies and play with different effects. Um, try grayscale, try color, just establish the light, establish the shadow, and the rest will fall into place. So that is, that is my skin tone speech. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and learned a little bit about coloring skin tones, directional lighting, and the diffused look on the face. I see that you are on pins and needles. What is up? Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> just the song from Yentl. I think that's how it goes. I know it is the song from Deadpool too. What? Really? <laughs> yeah. He sings it. He, he sings, sings it. it. <laughs> okay, Deadpool, classic, <laughs> classic. I have a really hard time not quoting we things love from him live on the internet because they're all totally inappropriate. <laughs> Deadpool is awesome. Yeah, don't let your kids he, watch that. He's our hero. Uh, <laughs> you're my hero. No. No. Okay, last, okay, let's skim the chat here. People are saying yes. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, You're most welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Isolina, thank you for spending your birthday with us. Isolina says thank you for the birthday song. She's laughed so hard. She had a really great time. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the songs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And good night. Bye. Bye. from Miami. Uh, it's got, well, it's got your pencils in it. Oh, my Black Widows. Whoa. That's so great. He actually sent you a whole box. A I thought he was just going to send you like one or wow. two or like some yeah. loose ones. I thought he was going to send me the, um, just the black ones because my black pencil is so short. Is there more than one box? Oh, there's another box in there. There's more than just another box in there. Oh. <laughs> oh. The whole thing? Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> What have you done? What the heck? Wow. Oh my god. Black Widows. Black Widows. Scorpions. Scorpions. Cobras. 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 <laughs> Scorpions. Oh. Scorpions. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, skin tones. <laughs> 
favorites. Wow. Three of each. Oh, I am so rich. I am so rich. This is like enough for a month. <laughs> <laughs> now, if only you had some white charcoal. If only.